Hello and welcome to the show. I am your host, Neil Taylor, and you are watching a short history of this time round. We're returning to Nokia and the N-Gage. Now, this one's a little bit different and was a little bit harder for me to do. Now, the first time we talked about the N-Gage was the original hardware itself, the phone. The smartphone that tried to double up as a handheld gaming device and kind of didn't succeed there and kind of didn't succeed as a phone and its redesign didn't succeed. But Nokia being Nokia, they did not want to give up on a good idea. And when, at the time you think about it, Nokia was perhaps the probably was the largest um, mobile phone handheld manufacturer out there. So they had a lot of phones out there. So what did they do with the N-Gage? Well, they converted it into a software platform, a service. Now, the best way of describing it I can think of is possibly calling it their equivalent to Xbox Live, which is kind of funny given how Nokia's mobile division ended up. I'll talk about that at the end of the video. So let's dive into the history of N-Gage 2.0, N-Gage the service. The Engage service, also referred to as Engage 2.0, was Nokia's mobile game platform that is available for several Symbian S60 smartphones from Nokia. Engage provided numerous games with 3D graphics into an application featuring, featuring online by the Engage Arena and social features to deliver a mobile gaming experience. It ran on compatible S60 Nokia smartphones and it takes its name from the Engage gaming smartphone, which it succeeded. On the 30th of October 2009, Nokia announced that no new Engage games would be produced and that the Engage service had ceased at the end of 2010. A total of 49 games were released for it. Nokia's Engage gaming smartphone from 2003 did not perform as well as expected, and its upgraded version, the QD, didn't improve the matter either. Instead of developing a new gaming device, there was a changing concept in Nokia. I explained to the world during the E3 2005 they were planning to put the Engage platform on several smartphone devices rather than on a specific device itself. Although their N81 model, with its two dedicated gaming buttons next to the screen, is being marketed as a phone built for games, it was often nicknamed as Engage Next Generation by the public. Working behind closed doors, it took little more than a year before E3 2006 to finally announce the Engage mobile gaming service set for a 2007 release. They also started showing off next generation titles such as System Rush Evolution and Hooked On Creatures of the Deep, with the fighting game one perhaps being the most visually impressive, even making use of motion capture. In February 2007, Nokia announced a pilot service in Finland to promote the upcoming service. Nokia showed off previews of the service at the 2007 Game Developer Conference in San Francisco. The Engage gaming service in its final form was finally announced by Nokia on the 29th of August 2007. Nokia used the tagline Get Out and Play to promote the platform. It was supposed to be released in December 2007 but was delayed as Nokia's team was making sure the service ran smoothly. A public beta test of the Engage application took place from the 4th of February 2008 to the 27th of March 2008, though limited only to the N81. The period of time was referred to as first access and only public tests of the client which could be downloaded for free from the Engage website. While not the final version, the user had access to most of the features that the new application had to offer, along with three games to try out, Hooked on Creatures from the Deep, System Rush Evolution, and Space Impact Kappa Base. Later in February, Nokia also released Tetris, Blockbreaker Deluxe, and World Series of Poker. None of the games are entirely free, but all offered a limited trial for testing purposes. In order to experience the full game, it had to be either purchased or rented. Shortly after being released to the public, hackers managed to unpack the Engage installation file into its components, which then could be installed separately, thus removing the N81 only limitation. Engage was subsequently reported working on other Nokia N series devices, such as the N73 and the N95. In response, Nokia released an advisory asking users not to install the unsupported version as it could cause errors and other issues. On March 20th, the official Engage blog reported that the first access would come to an end on the 27th of March. Though all download games at that time would still be playable through the application until the updated version was released, which occurred on the 3rd of April. After numerous delays and many vague release dates, the Engage platform was finally, and also quite suddenly, released to the public on the 3rd of April, through the Engage official website, though only five phone models are compatible to begin with. This probably had to do with the older models being less powerful, as was pointed out in an interview earlier in the same year where an Engage spokesman mentioned some memory issues with the N73. The launch titles also changed from 6 to only 5, Asphalt 3 Street Rules, Brain Challenge, Hooked On, Creatures of the Deep, 
System Rush Evolution and World Series of Poker Pro Challenge. The first two weren't even on the original list, but Blockbuster Deluxe and Tetris instead. The sixth game that was postponed was Space Impact Kappa Base. Some hours after the launch, Iconia, the man behind the official Engage blog, had this to say about the delay. We are currently ensuring Block Breaker Deluxe, Space Impact, Kappa Base and Tetris are running smoothly with our new application. They should be available in the showroom in the next week or two. Four days later, on the 7th of April, Nokia posted their official press release, commenting on the release of the new mobile service, at which point FIFA 08 also became available for purchase. With the release, the official website also saw a small change in appearance with price tags added to the games available for download, an event calendar, a tab for support on both the application itself and the Engage compatible device, and much more. Players logged onto the website could now also see their reputation level, an Engage level, and gather Engage points. There was also a release party held at the Engage chat room shortly after the release, with several members of the Engage team attending to answer any questions asked. A few t-shirts were randomly handed out during the three hour long event, and everyone was also promised a few Engage points for coming to the party. As expected, the launch was not problem free, but numerous people reported having trouble downloading, purchasing and activating games, installing the application and logging onto the Engage arena. Because the Engage is a software based solution, the first generic MMC game are not compatible with the new platform, though some games are making a comeback in the form of a sequel, for example System Rush Evolution, or a remake Strike Port for example Mile High Pinball. Similarly, games developed for the next generation Engage platform do not work on the original Engage nor, or, nor the Engage QD. Added to the fact that the newer S60 software included the Engage client and games aren't binary compatible with older S60 devices and vice versa. With a user interface that resembles Microsoft's Xbox Live service at the top of the Engage launcher, there are five icons that can be navigated through by pressing left or right on the, on the phone's thumbpad. These represent the user's games library, profile, friends list and the showroom. There have been a lot of hands-on articles with First Access clients and all generally reflected both the positive and negative feedback on the official First Access forum, where N81 users shared their thoughts on what was good and what that could have been made better, regarding both the launcher itself and the games currently available. The biggest issue at that point was that of players not being able to activate a purchased game but still having only the trial version to play. A lot of players have also been reporting connection issues. Head of New Experiences, Nokia Play, had this to say to Pocket Gamer in an interview on the 21st of February when asked about what early feedback they had received. The feedback has been positive and well received within the company, and some critical comments were well received as well. We know that it's not perfect yet and that there are some features people want more of. The, those are the things that we want to check and get on the roadmap. Prior to the closure of the, the Engage service, Nokia released updates for the Engage application on a regular basis. As of the 23rd of October 2009, there were only 49 games released officially on the Engage. Many other games were cancelled with the shutting down of the Engage service. On October the 30th, 2009, Nokia announced that no new Engage games will be produced, effectively shutting down the Engage platform. All Engage services, which included purchasing of games and various online features, had reportedly ceased operating by the end of 2010. On March 31st, 2011, Nokia closed the DRM activation service, leaving customers unable to reactivate their purchases in case of a device format or software update. No translation of their purchases was made to the OV store and no compensation was given because according to support staff, software purchases are only supported for one year. Some gaming websites, for example Pocket Gamer, owned the Engage failure to the overwhelming competition it faced from the Apple iPhone, while the OV Gaming cited poor implication and support from their parent company Nokia. And that was a short history of Nokia's Engage 2.0 or the Engage service, as you want to call it. Now, at the start of the video, I mentioned how the easiest way of describing the Nokia service w would be to equate it to an Xbox Live, which was very apt because now who, who owns Nokia's mobile division? Microsoft. That's right, they ended up uh, selling, they partnered up for a little while and then they ended up selling the mobile service to Microsoft and basically that's where all the Windows phones are coming. So a service that was like Xbox Live or took inspiration from Xbox Live. Yeah, and now we end up selling the mobile division to Microsoft and Microsoft produced the Windows phone, which obviously has the Xbox Live service on there now. 
It is a shame because Nokia is still around. They weren't originally a mobile phone company anyway. It was just the fact that their mobile division was losing a lot of money. They spent two years making huge losses, so they sold it to Microsoft, which from Nokia's business point of view is probably not a bad idea. It is a shame because I grew up in the era where Nokia was the name. You know, if you wanted a good mobile phone, you had a Nokia. These days, you know, you, you're bouncing between, obviously, Apple phone and um, debatable on how you feel about those. They do some, let's be honest, Apple do some scummy things with their phones. You have HTC rose up and fell and kind of rising up back again. Samsung, certainly everyone produces phones. But, you know, I just really wanted to finish off this short history because I it was a weird one for me because I didn't want to include this with the hardware. I didn't know if I was going to do this one at all because I don't normally do sort of a software based thing. So I thought I'd give it a try. And that pretty much brings us full circle. That is everything to do with the Engage done and dusted. But fear not, we have more videos coming and, oh, there's a handheld I'm really looking forward to getting to. It's not a big name, but it has such a fun and interesting story behind it, which also involves the Mafia. You know what, I might know that in a week or two, so tune back in for that one. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Leave me a comment down below, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel for more short history ofs. I do handhelds, I do consoles, I do all sorts on their companies. I did Naughty Dog not long ago, and I do video games too. Thank you very much for watching. I've been your host, Neil Taylor, and I'll see you next time.